Android Authority, what is going on? My name is Kevin the Tech Ninja, and today I'm reviewing the Moga Pro controllers. Once upon a time, far, far away in October 2013, I reviewed the Moga Pro Gaming Controller. I spoke highly of it, and it's still one of the best accessories that I've kept in my bag wherever I go. I even said it provided console like gaming control on your Android device. Well, this holiday, Moga has geared up and brought us something new. Two unique controllers. Does it continue its reign as the best Android accessory? Well, let's find out. First controller I'm gonna talk about is the Moga Hero Pro controller. This is designed to be slim and portable, something that could be easily slipped into a bag or even your pockets. On the surface, the controller has dual clickable analog sticks, a D-pad, A, B, X, and Y buttons, L1, L2, R1, R2 buttons as well. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, Kevin, this sounds really great, but what's the big deal? Well, thank you, viewer. Let me tell you the big deal. Built into the controller, it has a rechargeable 1800 mAh battery. You can charge your device as you play. Also, this controller includes a LED battery life indicator so you can see how much juice is actually left. The big brother to the Hero controller is the Moga Pro Power controller, which is the newer version of the controller previously reviewed. This too has the D-pad, ABX and Y buttons, shoulders and triggers. And also, it has a rechargeable battery. This one comes in a whopping 2300 mAh. The Moga Pro Power Controller is not as portable as this little brother, but yet again, it provides console-like control. This controller really feels like an Xbox controller. It requires little to no adjustment period. Due to the battery and the size of the controller, it's heavier than last year's model, weighing in at 251 grams versus 190 grams from last year. Both controllers are great in their own right. The Hero is shockingly small, but really feels good in the hands. The controller is made out of plastic and the analogs are covered in rubber. The rubber on the analogs sometimes becomes slippery and tough to grip. The buttons really remind me of marbles, and that's the only way I can really describe the texture of them. The press depth may not be as pronounced as you'd expect on a keyboard or a console controller, but it's enough feedback to let you know you've pressed the button. The shoulder buttons are a bit stiff, and since the controller is so thin, it probably doesn't have enough depth for the buttons to go down so far. And that's just me nitpicking here. Overall, this controller feels great, and being able to dock your phone on top of it, toss it back in your pocket, negates any kind that I just mentioned. I will go on record to say that the Moga Pro Power Controller is the best controller I've used for a mobile device. Not only does it feel like an Xbox controller, it controls like one as well. There is no lag when making precise movements and adjustments on the controller. The plastic molded handles really contours to your hands. The analogs are covered in rubber and they also have a lip around the edge. And this really allows your fingers to get a good grip. The plastic buttons have great depth when you push them in and this prevents accidental presses. The shoulder buttons feels as expected and the triggers really allow me to push pretty far. Speaking of triggers, they remind me of the new PlayStation 4 controller. They're flat and wide and makes them easy to find. Both controllers provide a LED for battery life, an arm to hold your devices, and also an A to B switch. More on this later. The arm on this line of mobile controllers are 3.7 inches long, which can hold my Galaxy Note 3 with no issues. Last year's model had a 3.4 inches arm, and although it did hold the Galaxy Note 3, it became unstable and very wobbly. For some reason, if you don't want to have your phone connected to your controller, or you have a tablet, there is an optional stand that it comes with. It's a pretty basic plastic stand that flips out, and there's nothing else I can really say about it. When it comes to charging your device, both of these controllers come with their own internal battery pack. This feature is called the Moga Boost, and it only works if your controller has 25% of battery life or more. Also, the battery is shared, so this battery that charges your device is the same battery that keeps the controller working in the first place. The controllers will continue to work below 25%, but it no longer charges your device. To conserve battery on the Mogas, you can simply unplug it from the device. It's really tough to calculate the real world usage that you would expect with this controller. It depends on too many factors, screen brightness, Wi-Fi on or off, how much power the game uses, what type of signal you have, and so on and so forth. But in my experiences, my Note 3 with the Pro Power charged my phone for about two and a half hours and around an hour and a half on the Hero controller. And that's a huge your miles may vary situation. Regardless if you get one hour or if you get two hours, knowing that you can charge your device while playing on the go in a slim portable compact device is a bonus feature. Just like before to pair your controllers, you launch the Pivot application, which is found in the Play Store. 
It has a few things it asks you to do, like turn on Bluetooth and ensure the controller is on. And within a few moments, it's paired. This Pivot application acts like a MOGA controller compatible Play Store. It shows you a large amount of games that your controller is compatible with, but I urge you to go out to the Play Store and see which games are controller compatible independently because the Pivot Store does not have all the games on there that are controller compatible, only games that they've tested. And I have no idea how often the Pivot Store even updates this list in the first place. On the controller, you'll notice that it has an A and B switch. A is your primary mode of gaming and B is HID compatible. So this tries to find a way to make the controller work on non-controller games. It's really hit or miss, but it's still a nice feature to have. Overall, I'm excited about the new line of mobile controllers. The Hero Edition may not have the best control, but it's very portable, something you can toss in your pocket, and also it charges your device on the go, which is a really big deal. The Pro Edition is a bit bulkier, but it's really made for hardcore gamers. If you really want to play Dead Trigger or any game that requires great control on your device, then the Pro Controller is the best option you have in the market right now. And I can see it being a huge gift this holiday season. As you heard from the review, both controllers has their pros and cons, which is good. So you have a lot of options if you're looking to get something like this. As always guys, my name is Kevin, AKA The Tech Ninja. You can find me on YouTube and on Google Plus. And this is Android Authority. Make sure you drop a like below and go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you like what we do. And we are Android Authority, your source for all things Android. Take care.